Sophia, you've, you've talked about how being told no throughout your career, you know, uh, left off the 19 team, um, been told you were going to play certain positions when you were traded and not, not play positions is good for your soul. Why do you say that? Why is, has being told no so many times a reason that we're sitting here today with you? Yeah. I would say that being told no has helped me just find my confidence from within because I think just as athletes, you know, we're, all, we're always being told by coaches, teammates that we're really, really good or, or we didn't have a good game or whatever. So we're like looking at external factors to tell us how we performed or how we should feel about ourselves because obviously the athletes do kind of tie sometimes their worth to like how they perform. That's something that everyone needs to work on. I work on that all the time because obviously I'm more than just a soccer player, but I think that's just natural for us to be looking at Twitter or what people are saying but because I've been told so many times no I've just had to like get my confidence and my belief from within and that's helped me a lot throughout my career because I've been told no and I still even leading up to the roster reveal was told that I wasn't gonna make the roster and so many people were trying to like doubt in my mind um, but I just stayed true to myself and believed that okay well I think I've done what I've needed to do to make this 23 so well, I think I'm making it, but I guess we'll see. Um, so I think that's how it's helped me, just because I've had to really seek um, internal belief in myself rather than external. And Vlaco just said in this press conference that your decision to uh, not play for Mexico and try to make the U.S. team, he called it brave. Would you agree with that, and why or why not? Yeah, I would call it brave, for sure. Um, I think just having to make that decision at such a young age, just because of getting cap tied, um, you know, I, I couldn't just hold off, so I, um, at 19, decided to make that decision, although I wasn't getting any uh, communication from the U.S. team, so I really had no idea if I was ever going to be someone that they were interested in or that I was ever going to get called into a camp, because I was never with the youth teams. I got called to, like, one youth team, basically, my whole youth, so I just had no idea if I was ever going to be in the conversation um, with the national team, let alone in the conversation for a big World Cup or an Olympic roster or just in, in fact anything like that. So I think it was a huge risk, but my dad always told me, and he still tells me, like, take risks, especially when you're young, as he <laughs> says. Um, so I just feel like it was a risk that I was willing to take, and I knew that if I didn't take that risk and I didn't try to play for the U.S. team, I'd have more regret in that sense compared to if I would have played for Mexico and got to play in multiple World Cups and just have a different role. I feel like I would have regretted that. So I'm really thankful that I decided to bet on myself. And although I'm 30 getting my first World Cup um, roster, I'm I'm really thankful for my journey and feel like, yeah, well, I was pretty brave, right? I don't know. Do you think so? Right? For sure, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sophia, Jackie, we'll make balls. Um, two questions for you. But first off, when it comes to this World Cup, what are just some of the lessons that you've learned from your teammates, whether it's like Pino or just other national teammates as well? Well, I think specifically the World Cup. Everyone always says, especially veteran players, that it's a different beast. Like, it is completely different than anything that you've ever experienced. Um, so I think I really take that into heart. You know, I hear them say that, and I believe that it's different than anything else. Um, but I also know that everyone talks about, like, don't, kind of what I mentioned earlier, people are going to say what they're going to say, especially during the World Cup. So just stay focused, believe in what the team and the staff is, is 
saying and what we're really trying to strive for and don't let anything else get in the bubble that we are going to create when we're there. So Yeah, and another point too, I was talking with Asha Sanchez just about her culture and her heritage of being um, Mexican-American soccer player and what that's like. I know she shared some conversations that you two have had. Um, when you think about that, what does that mean for you, just getting to take this national team stage? Um, and like, What will be that message that you want to share with young fans, maybe who haven't always seen someone that's looked like them? Well, I'm really proud to represent the Latinx community, for sure. I, you know, I've been asked before if it, if it felt like pressure, and I said absolutely not. I think it's something I'm just really proud of. And I would say that the message I would give off to all the young boys and girls that are watching, someone like myself and like Ashley Sanchez, is me specifically, though, just regardless of how many times you've been told no, and if you believe in yourself, you know, you can accomplish anything you want to. And I think for me, when I was making the decision to play for Mexico or the U.S., I struggled because I wanted to represent both. Obviously, that wasn't possible, but you know, I had a lot of conversations with my dad, and I felt like it was possible if I played for the U.S. and I had work on the back of my jersey that little boys and girls could see the Hispanic last name, and if you can see it, you can be it. So it's really important for me to be one of the two Latinx people on the team um, and to represent a community that's unfortunately not represented too much. And then all but one NWSL player, current, or sorry, U.S. Women's National Team player plays in the NWSL. Can you talk about the role that the NWSL has played in kind of getting you here today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the NWSL is such a great league, obviously. I mean, every weekend, I'm sure all of you guys know, is a, a tough game. I don't think at this point any game that you go into is it going to be an easy one. So I think that the NWSL definitely prepares every player here um, for the big stage. And I think that's, you know, a conversation that probably a lot of people are having. You know, this team is really young, this sport team um, players who haven't been to the World Cup and the roster is young but I have no doubt in the players because I see them every weekend play in the NWSL and have so much success. Yeah. Sophia. Sorry, Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you have a lot of diversity on any team, whether it's a soccer team or, you know, a team in a business, it's, it's a good thing because it gives other perspectives. Um, you know, all of us have a similar journey in terms of us playing soccer when we were younger, but we all have different journeys when it comes to, like, how we were raised and, you know, our parents' culture and what they you know, put upon us when we were growing up. So I think it just like adds a lot of different perspectives and can only help, you know, the common goal, which is obviously to win a World Cup. Sophia, can you talk about the, uh, the reaction from your family when you told them the news that you were going to the World Cup? Yeah, it was really emotional. For me, it was really emotional, specifically. I, I could cry probably right now talking about it, but definitely that day when Vodka had called me, it was a long day. Um, but then, yeah, I FaceTimed my family and, you know, they all got emotional and cried because they've been on this journey with me. Uh, specifically, my dad has just really seen me on this journey and known how much I've struggled. And I think because of his, you know, his life and how much he sacrificed, I think this meant so much to him um, because he decided to move his family from Mexico to the United States so we could have more opportunity. And I think this just made him feel like it was all so worth it. And so I think it was really exciting for me my dad like said he lost sleep those nights leading up to the call I was like really I'm fine why are you not sleeping but I think it just meant so much to all of us um, and so I'm so, so thankful for my family support so just one more um uh, you going back to your original your very unique story um is there an advice that that you will give uh, young players that have to make tough decisions when they're very young like the, like the ones that you did when they're choosing between two yeah. national teams yeah i would say that my advice would be to you know ask yourself some hard questions but just know that you're the only one that knows what you want to do it's important to get people's opinions but don't let that sway you because i think if i would have gone back to that time probably 90 percent of people told me to play for mexico and i just I've always kind of been a little rebellious, but I really didn't want to listen to all of them. I was like, I know exactly what I want to what, what I want to do, and I believed in that. So just you know, really ask yourself what you want to do and go with that. Go with your gut. You mentioned just, the call from Blacko. How would you describe your interactions with Blacko, and what are his characteristics? And how are they different from any other coach you've played on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Vladko is a really good guy. I think that's important to note that he's a great coach, but he's just a really good person, which I appreciate. Um, and our interactions are what, exactly what you think they would be. You know, I think he really cares about me as a person, but, you know, his his job is to win 
win games and win World Cup. So it is also really professional. It's about what I can do better on the field. Um, and yeah, so our interactions are totally normal. And he's he's a good guy, he's such a great coach. And yeah, just about the day when he called me, I was not expecting a FaceTime call. You know, I just thought he was gonna ring me up, but it was a FaceTime and I just wasn't expecting that at all. So um, it was very funny interaction between us specifically in that moment. I was like, are you FaceTime me right now? But no, he's amazing and um, I'm so thankful that he gave me this opportunity to, to Where be on the roster. Where were you when he FaceTimed you? I was in my hotel room in Houston. We had just traveled that day. It was a long day. He had texted me that morning and I had to wait like six hours to talk to him. So it was a long day filled with a lot of anticipation. Just what was uh, Becca looking for you specifically this season? At any point in time did you feel confident that you met those, what they were looking for in terms of making the team? Yeah, I, you know, he definitely has been, um, you know, vocal with me with what I'm good at, why I'm on the team, and what I need to improve. And so, you know, he's laid that out for me very um, specifically. So I knew exactly what I need to do um, in the beginning part of this NWSL season. And I felt, I did feel confident in that, but I think at the end of the day, you just never know. There are so many other factors that can go into making a World Cup team. So whether I did that or not, it wasn't really up to me. It was kind of out of my control. You know, there's, again, a lot of things that play into selecting a roster. So I just really didn't know. I was really such a bubble player. And I didn't know until I saw the FaceTime. And then I thought, okay, this, this has to be good news. Um, <laughs> right. uh, you mentioned, sorry, Stephanie from Sports Illustrated. You mentioned that in the lead up, you had people telling you that you weren't going to make the team. Who was saying that? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, a lot of people on Twitter. Okay. Just so talking like about, yeah, 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 exactly. No one, no one that really cares about. Okay, no one me, but yeah, everyone like mock rosters. Like I really wasn't on any of them. And I was, you know, it, it, it is, it's impossible not to see and to have a thought of like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I can't put too much energy into it because sure. no one really knows what it's like when you're in that environment. I know, you know, what I've done the last year and a half, two years on this team, the relationships I've built with the staff and with the team. So I was confident, but I just. I don't know. Yeah. Um, being, being one of the few um, Mexican Americans on the roster, how does it feel to now be an inspiration to a new generation of immigrants or children of immigrants saying, neither here nor there, but I feel represented by her? Yeah, I, someone had just asked me that, and I said that I'm so proud to represent the Latinx community. You know, when I was making the decision to play for Mexico or the U.S., I had a hard time deciding because I didn't want it to feel like I was choosing one or the other, having to choose what I wanted to identify with more because it felt that way at times um, because I identify as a Mexican-American. And, um, you know, although I grew up in Idaho, I went to Mexico multiple times a year with my family all the time during the best times of the year, like Christmas. And so I was really engraved in that culture, although I grew up somewhere where it wasn't celebrated that often. But I'm really proud to rep represent the Latinx community, and I hope that all the little girls and boys that see where on the back of my jersey know that they can accomplish anything that they want to. Can you drill down on internal confidence? Like, how, how did you develop it? Oh, gosh, it was a lot of work. Um, you know, I've been working with a life coach since I was, like, 22. I have a sports site. Um, these are things that I knew from a young age were going to impact my career. I just could feel that, you know, because in college I struggled a lot with confidence, and I, I could see that it would affect my performances. And so I just knew that I needed to get, you know, figure it out because when you get to a professional level, like there's not really a lot of time to um, not have that figured out. And I feel like I experienced that, especially when I was getting called in 2017 and then stopped getting called in 2018 or before the 2019 World Cup. I just like full on experience not having my head right and not um, being, you know, the best version of myself up here to be able to perform so I just felt like that was something that I really needed to work on because I think obviously when you believe in yourself that that's the most effective thing and like I mentioned being an athlete it's so easy to see what what people are saying on, externally and on social media and and all of that but really you just have to get the confidence from within because that's how you're going to perform at the highest level on the lighter side of things like do you have any pre-game rituals or routines you like to take part in before games uh yeah I do um I mean it depends obviously because right. sometimes I'm home in Seattle with my dog and you know I take her on walks and stuff but I would say like on the road it's definitely important for me to Norma Tech and to watch um you know a soccer game like to just sit down and relax and just like watch an EPL game and see kind of like okay well maybe I can try this in the game and just yeah. um kind of learn from that so definitely try and like stay calm okay. um 
it's hard to do sometimes though when we have a game at seven o'clock at night. It's like you have all day, but yeah, definitely just try to relax. Is that going to change going forward? Like when you're looking ahead to this World Cup, or is it still going to be kind of the same strategy? No, it's going to be the same. I've had the same game day routine for years now, and you know, people say how important it is, and I actually really believe that. I just feel like. On that day, I don't want to make any decisions. I don't want anything to be ruined. It's just I know exactly what I'm going to do. You know, I control what I can control, basically. So if yeah, it's World Cup time, it's the uh, end of is doing well. There's a new league coming in a couple of years in the USL. Um, what would you say the state of the game is right now for women? And just uh, and this is maybe, maybe the greatest time. Oh, yeah, it's so incredible. Like, even being in San Diego last weekend in that environment, you know, there's 23,000 fans there. It's just so different than when I was a rookie in the league in 2015. It's changed completely, you know. When I was playing on Chicago, we played at a you know a college field with lacrosse lines and uh, football lines. You know, it just has completely changed. And so I think everybody knows when you invest in women's sports, you're going to get a return. Um, we're incredible, um, and I think that the league has obviously grown so much, and it continues to grow. Not just like monetary wise, but um, just. I think skill as well. Like the, the, every game is getting really competitive. Every game is difficult. It's never an easy win. And so I think it's just grown a lot, and I'm so thankful to be a part of it. Sophia, we talked about the Eastern sports scene. Two things real quick. Number, number one, congratulations being on the team. And, and secondly, Dorga Esposito, the theme is it's an initiative, very, very strong message to a lot of players. Uh -huh. They're young Sophia's right now waiting to turn. So your thoughts on that, and also your extended family, because you know we have the culture that is supporting you as well, whether you're there in person or not, but we you know the, the heart, the corazón, the spirit of, is with you wherever you go. Can, can you just address those two? Yeah, I mean, I think every, anything is possible. That is really just, I think, my journey in a nutshell. I always believed that it was possible, although a lot of people did it. And so I think, just going based off what you said, believing in yourself and believing that anything is possible is so powerful. Like, our minds are so powerful. And although it may not seem like anything is possible, it is, if you really think that it is, and you work towards it, and really, you're the only person that knows what you need to do to accomplish your dreams. Um, and then, yeah, my family in Mexico, I know, they, they mean so much to me. Even when I was making the decision a long time ago, they were always so supportive and just wanted to, me to do what made me happy. And, you know, even now we have a WhatsApp group chat and, you know, they were so excited when I made the team. And, um, you know, they were at qualifiers last year as well. So I always feel the support from them. You know, family's everything in Mexico. I, didn't, I don't get to see them often, but I always feel them in my heart, so. Sophia, what's it like to be able to have, obviously it's your first World Cup and you have veterans like Megan and Alex who are able to kind of show you the ropes. Obviously you're established in what you've already done, but what kind of comfort and support can you get from players like Megan and Alex who you know have been there and can kind of show you the ropes of what's going on? Yeah, I think it's really important to have veteran players on the team, as everybody knows. Like to have a Megan Rapino, Alex Morgan, Kelly O'Hara, who have been it here in this position four times. Like I, being in my first media day, can't imagine having to having gone to four World Cups. Like. It's just, I mean, what an accomplishment for them. But I also think they just bring so much to the table, obviously on the field, but just off because they know exactly what we're going to face at this World Cup. And, you know, they're going to be in those meetings telling us what to expect. And even on the field, you know, they, they've seen things that none of us have seen. Um, they've experienced so many things that none of us can even, you know, conceptualize. So they are so important to this team for so many reasons. But I think that specifically just because they've seen this before and uh, we trust them all so much. So whatever they say, we're just, we're honed in. So if you, but you, when you were a child, were there any teams that you support, any players that really looked up to in their America or Mexico? Um, yeah, I mean, when I was young, though, for sure, when I watched the 99ers win the World Cup, that was, like, the moment that I knew I wanted to play on the national team. So I really looked up to Mia Hamm. I, I purchased her book. I think it was called Broken Gold. Yeah, I, I purchased her book. I loved Brandi Chastain, Julie Foudy. I mean, I loved all of them. Um, but I definitely watched uh, the Mexican men's team more than the, the U.S. team. Uh, and looked up to a lot of them because they were just so, so, so good. But yeah, I would say the 99ers for sure were, were my role models. You played quite a journey from Boise to Mexico, Australia, et cetera, U.S. now. What, was there a low point? And if so, what was it? Like, where were you? What happened? Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, there was a low point. I would say my lowest point was just when I was on the U.S. team throughout 2017 to 2018. Um, I was told by 
the national team coach at the time, Jill, that I needed to play outside back of my club team because I was playing forward there. So she suggested I get traded. I was on Chicago, which they were like top of the table, and I got traded to Houston, who were at the bottom, to play outside back. And then I got traded there and didn't see a minute at outside back. And I remember I um, had played the number 10 attacking midfielder, which was out of position anyway. So that was just a whirlwind. Um, scored a goal, thought it performed well, and then received an email like two days later saying that Jill was going to look at other players. And then I wasn't called into the national team for like three years. That was the lowest point because I had made this decision to, you know, play for the U.S. Then I finally got that opportunity. Then that opportunity didn't, you know, pan out the way that I wanted it to, or what I had dreamt it to be. And so it was a lot of self-doubt, a lot of, um, I wouldn't say regret, but almost like talking to myself and whether I made the right decision, um, and just didn't know if I was ever getting the opportunity again to play for the U.S. because it's so competitive, and getting one opportunity to play for the U.S. is such an accomplishment so to get two I just never knew if it was going to happen again so that was a moment where I was really down but I just had to switch my mindset um, because I just felt like I thought that if I wasn't on the U.S. team I wasn't successful but that was a narrative that I needed to switch because that doesn't mean I'm not successful I was a professional player in the NWSL I've been in the league for over five years and I was really good so you know I am very successful I have a really good life so I needed to look at what I did have versus what I didn't because I was putting way too much pressure on myself to perform every time I stepped on the field it was like I have to have the best game ever so I get called back in and I just wasn't able to perform at my best because of that so that was a really tough time obviously you know fast forward a few years I'm in a completely different spot and now I've been selected for the 23 World Cup roster so um, it was a down moment but obviously it's it's made my journey what it is and I'm really thankful for it because it just had me dig really deep into like what I wanted what I need to change and the belief that I had to have in myself to make that dream happen again Thanks, guys. Thank you. We gotta move her. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you. Thanks.